So let's say logic is abandoned because all three of us are in agreement on this show. They should make a change of head coach. But let's say the Texans keep Lovey. What needs to happen from that point forward? What's the plan if Lovey's the head coach? The biggest thing for me is you've got to figure out a way to run this offense much, much better than you did this past season and throughout the course of the season. So that is more than likely a firing of all of, if not most of the offensive staff and a wide ranging search for an offensive mind worth taking over or worth handing really this offense and worth having them take over this offense. That would be the absolute biggest key for me. If Lovey Smith is sticking around is you've got to figure out a way to move the football and to score more points, especially if this organization is indeed going to use the number one overall draft pick on a quarterback. So you've got to get better on offense. Pep Hamilton had his opportunity. Pep Hamilton has failed with his opportunity. So he does not get another one when this franchise is at such an inflection point that you have to get things right. So you have to search far and wide. You're not getting another team's offensive coordinator. So that's one of the tough parts about it. So you're picking off former offensive coordinators. You're picking off guys who get fired. You're picking quarterback coaches that are looking for that next opportunity or passing game coordinators or things like that. So it's very tough, but you have to figure out the offense. That would be the chief number one without a question thing for me is the offense has to have a different direction and has to have a different coach running the offense. Did you guys see over the weekend the NFL sent a memo out to its team informing them that Across the league, teams have paid $800 million for early firings over the past five years. I saw this pop up Sunday morning. Adam Schefter reported this. Mm -hmm. And it felt like, to me, a waste of time by the NFL to say this to the teams. And it also felt like a very strange tweet for Adam Schefter to be sort of promoting. I, I couldn't figure out exactly why this mattered or why this should matter to me. Or if I owned a team... To me, if I owned a team. That's the hope. Could Cal McNair look at that memo and say, oh, God, I don't want to do this again? Could that cause him to think about how many people he's already paying to not work here and be like, I don't want to go through this again? Like, not only did the league send out that memo, but they also included detailed spreadsheets breaking down how much each team has cost itself with their lack of patience from firing coaches before their contract is over and ultimately paying that type of buyout money. Like I, I don't know. It shouldn't. I'm with you, Cody. If I'm an owner, that's not changing my mind, and it shouldn't change the mind of any owner who is confident in the decision they're about to make when it comes to whether or not they should fire their head football coach or their GM or really anybody that's under contract under them. But I, just, I think that's interesting, and we joke about it, but it's a real thing that Cal McNair and the Houston Texans do a better job of paying people to not work than anybody else in sports. So I thought that was random, and I thought the timing of that happening over the weekend was interesting. I didn't even see the tweet. I heard Paul talking about it early, earlier today. I almost thought Paul had gotten got by a fake Twitter account, by a Twitter blue thing, but that was a real thing the league sent out. So my hope is the Texans' decisions are not impacted by that sort of wake-up call, which I think the goal of that was to try to get teams to not fire their coaches as quickly as they've been doing. That's exactly what the goal was of that tweet. Why Schefter is carrying the league's water to put it out there, I don't know. I don't know what he gets out of that, but it's not going to stop teams from firing coaches. That, that was If that was the goal, it came at the weakest time. It could have come with three, four, at that time, at the time, four weeks left in the season. I mean, you already had two coaches fired in season. Yeah. So, like, it's, it's not going to stop. I wonder if that was sort of directed towards the Texans a little bit, though, too. But, anyways, sort of sidebar, not really sidebar. I'm with you, Cody. If ultimately Lovey Smith stays, it's not just the offense. It is just as important for me if Lovey Smith is brought back to be the head coach next season because the Texans don't want to fire another coach after just one year, you also have to bring in somebody to run the defense. You cannot run this version of Lovey Smith's defense in 2023. You can't run it in 2022. We're seeing that. You can't run it in 2021. We saw that last year. This defense is, in the words of that progressive commercial where all the ants go over to the house, expired. Expired. This defense sucks. It doesn't work. The Texans have had one of the worst defenses in football since Lovey Smith got here. This defense got picked apart in college when Lovey Smith was at Illinois. It was getting picked apart towards the end of Lovey's time in Tampa Bay and in Chicago as well. If you want to keep Lovey Smith here and just say, ah, he's the game manager guy, you still need to bring somebody else in to run the defense. Uh, 
even if you had a better offensive coordinator this year, it wouldn't change the defensive inconsistencies that we've seen from this team way too often over the last couple of years while Lovey's been in charge. You've got to bring in a defensive coordinator as well because you're going to have more talent on that side of the football. Yeah, maybe you take a quarterback 1-1. One, one. You should, but you're, you're going to use a lot of your draft capital on defense. You might bring in a couple of free agents. You might make a trade or two to bring in defense. You're going to need somebody better coaching those guys up on that side of the football. So, yeah, I mean, it's offensive and defensive coordinator 1-1-A. One, one you cannot let Lovey Smith run both the head coaching and the defense again next season because that clearly has not worked this year. If they bring back Lovey Smith, they should pull a, a Jeremy Brandom here. Just tank all next year. What's the point? What's the point? Just be bad again and ensure you get Caleb Williams at that rate. Like, How, how could this team bring back Lovey Smith after what we watched for most of the season already. There's three games to go. If they do bring back Lovey Smith, I agree with everything you guys said, but like just thinking, even thinking out this scenario would make me very upset if I'm a fan of the Texans. Yeah, that's why, that's why you prefaced it. We started with let's abandon all logic and hope. Lovey Smith's back as the head coach. Yeah. There's a scenario where it happens. Certainly. I, I still believe that, even if they didn't play that well over these last couple of weeks. You're just, like, you're just kicking the can down the road because like, what's going to happen next year? Lovey's going to magically be a great coach when we know in his track record. He's had five winning seasons in like 17 years as a head coach, and all that happened over a decade ago with the Bears. Here's the here's the easy part about making it look like Lovey's done a better job is you're going to have yet, again, more talent. He's going to have less say. You'd, in theory, have a new defense, a new offense. You'd have a lot more talent. You've invested a lot more into the team. And then going from four wins to one win, was a really bad step back for this franchise and for this organization. But then all Lovey Smith needs to do is get to what? Four wins, five wins, and the organization can point to significant improvement from a one win football team. They won four times, five times as many games as they won the year before. Like the bar sort of gets reset for Lovey Smith's team in some people's eyes and in the argument for that. It wouldn't be for me. And the tough part about Lovey Smith coming back is if you start slow to begin the year next year, you may have to fire him in season, mm. which that's chaotic for your rookie quarterback or any of your rookies. That's chaotic for your second year players who you're trying to uh, get acclimated to the NFL. And you've got a couple of talented players who are playing well right now that you would like to have some sort of really solid base for them to start building in the NFL because they're going to be key pieces of your organization for the next few years. And there's just, there's a lot of chaos associated with bringing Lovey Smith back because you're not going to be able to hire the best offensive minds. The best offensive minds are going to be head coaches. The best offensive minds are not going to be guys who take your offensive coordinator job. Even if they're getting a say in who the quarterback is and, and what type of offense and, and what guys you're signing in free agency and this and that, you're still not getting the best offensive minds that are available to be had. And then from a defensive perspective, like uh, you, like Lovey Smith's going to walk down the hallway and fire his son? He's going to fire his son who's the linebacker's coach when that position group has underachieved this year? Mm -hmm. like, that's not happening. He might promote his son to defensive coordinator. And at that rate, I'd rather do that and just be bad again next year than try and hire a great staff around Lovey who shouldn't be the head coach because they didn't want him to be the head coach in the first place anyway. Now, I don't think it's totally out of the question about some – janky, weird setup that the Texans could put together with Lovey coming back, and I'll explain next. Cody, we went to break, and you teased something for us about Lovey Smith this segment. I do wonder if there is a unusual and weird setup that the Texans may try to attempt by bringing back Lovey Smith, and that would be something of hiring a guy either to run the offense or run the defense that they believe could be a head coach eventually and have that person be in the building on the off chance Lovey Smith performs poorly and the team performs poorly and you want to fire him in the season and that person gets a runway of, say, 10 games or so to prove their worth or just... Lovey Smith's the coach this year. That person who either runs the offense or runs the defense is in the building, a part of the organization, 
whatever happens, happens. And then the organization has a conversation with Lovey Smith at the conclusion of the next year and says, hey, what about you hanging him up? We'll pay you. And then we let this young guy take over. Now, remember, Lovey Smith was adamant that it was important for him to be a steward for future coaches. And he specifically mentioned Pep Hamilton. The offense hasn't run well, so it's hard for him to be a steward for Pep Hamilton as a future head coach because the offense has stunk this year with Pep as the offense coordinator. But Lovey Smith talked about how it was so important for him to be a steward for head coaches of the future as a head coach. And so I do wonder if Lovey Smith is back, if the head coach after Lovey Smith gets hired to run either the offense or the defense, that'd be a pretty easy way to shoehorn in somebody that would be unimpressive as a head coach hire, but eventually could take over with some familiarity of the organization. I have two names in mind. Okay. You already know one of them. Josh? They bring in Josh McCown to run the offense. And then the other one's Cade McCown? No, not Cade McCown. Okay. Jeff Saturday? No, not Jeff Saturday. Who else is unqualified? How, how could Cal McNair let... His general manager had the plan being we keep Lovey and then bring in McCown. We all know what they're doing at that point. They're getting McCown ready to be the head coach. With a year of offensive coordinator experience, he's then ready to be a head coach. That's enough. So they let Nick do that. I guess Cal hypothetically could take over the plan and be like, Nick, if you want to continue working here and catching a check, you're going to do what I say. And that could ultimately be Cal's call. Ultimately, all of this is the McNair family's call. If you believe the credible reports, he stepped in and prevented them from hiring McCown the first time, but... Now, a year later, he's going to let him hire McCown as the OC and keep Lovey. Look, if you walk in, if you're Nick Casario, you walk in, you say, I want to fire Lovey Smith, and the owner tells you you can't fire Lovey Smith, and you say, okay, well, then what can I do? Well, you can you can fire everybody but Lovey Smith. Okay, well, then I can I hire the next head coach after Lovey Smith and put him on the staff? I don't care what you do. We can't fire Lovey Smith this year. Mm. Okay, well, if I was Nick Casario, I'd be trying to find my next head coach and get him on the staff. I'd, I'd, go, I'd go try to find somebody, shoehorn them into the building, because if you have a legitimate option in-house, it helps keep you safe as well. Remember, as human beings, we are all inclined to take care of ourselves as much as possible. Sure. Especially in business, when you're in a decision-making process, you typically try to insulate yourself from negative consequences. I don't know that there's good consequences, but you try to insulate yourself from consequences regardless of if you're the actions or you're not the actions. So if you were Nick Casario and you're looking around like, I've been dealt a bad hand here. I had a weird first year because the quarterback wanted out. When I took the job, I thought I was going to have the quarterback. And then I couldn't trade him because he was a sexual deviant, allegedly. And then the second year, I wanted to hire a guy. They didn't let me hire that guy because somebody sued the NFL and sued the team. And now here, I can't fire the guy. So now I'm trying to keep my job. I'm trying to keep my paycheck. I'm trying to keep control of this organization to an extent. I'd be trying to shoehorn in my guy. And on offense, that might be Josh McCown. And the defensive name that I have, it would go against, we are not the Patriots South. Uh-oh. But Gerard Mayo's gotten head coach interviews. I, I can't. I can't. I can't, <laughs> I can't do an offseason where they come away with keeping Lovey and McCown and Gerard Mayo are the coordinators. Oh, my God. I, I, no. No. Stop it. We're not talking about this for six months. That's what they do. I'd like to think that'd be an upgrade over what they have right now. But there's a million other ways you could upgrade more than that. I'm just hire I, Belichick if you want to like, be the Patriots South. All right, that will excite me. The hire Bill Belichick. The, the point that this is even like a worthwhile conversation with this franchise shows you the chaos that is present still with this organization. For sure, shows you the 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 lack of ease of which this organization operates. Like I wish it was just so simple that we all knew for sure the head coach who has one win to his name this year was for sure getting fired, and the general manager was safe and was going to get to hire whoever the hell he wanted, and he was going to pick from, he was going to shop at the top. That's my big thing, shop at the top. I wish it was that simple, but they have been so chaotic and weird in the way that things have run for the Houston Texans that, like, what I have just presented is not even the craziest thing you could say about the Houston Texans. All right, let me ask you this. So that scenario unfolds. Would you rather that or just clean house and start over? When you say clean house, you mean new general manager as well? New GM. New coaching staff. You start over with everyone involved. Well, obviously, if if the if the option is keep Lovey Smith and Josh McCown and or Gerard Mayo's in waiting as one of the coordinators, I'd rather clean house. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather. I mean, I, I, most people would tell you they'd rather clean house. If if there's there's very few keep Lovey Smith scenarios. 
that to me are better than just, okay, everybody starts over. Yeah, if that's Nick Casario's plan, number one, that'd be surprising because I don't think Lovey Smith as the head coach was ever his plan. I think that was a Cal McNair pivot. And number two, yeah, that, that's fireable. Like, if that's what he wants to do after all of this, uh, that's where he wants to pivot, and that's what he thinks will get this fan base excited and keep him safe for multiple years beyond this one. That's ridiculous. Again, I, I, if you put truth serum in Nick Casario right now, he'd tell you he's going to just hire whoever he wants this offseason. He's going to go through the entire process and hire whoever he wants in the offseason. I was just operating on the parameter of if he can't fire Lovey Smith, what would he do? What could he do? What should he do? Yeah. It, 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 there's a chance that happens. Yeah. Like you said, that's not super far-fetched. Like, uh, there's a chance that the Texans want to keep Lovey Smith around for another year, despite the record, despite the eye test, despite how much of a joke this franchise has been, just because they don't want to fire another coach after one year. It's very rare where any team fires a coach after one season. It's incredibly, incredibly rare. It's where it happens two years in a row. Now, hey, the last time it happened, it worked out pretty well, didn't it? San Francisco? They had a new GM, though. They did. They did. But like, uh, it, it can work. Like, you can go one and done with two coaches and bring in a third coach. And if you get the guy right, then there you go. It, it is apples to oranges to an extent because there was a new GM involved. And, of course, the Niners are a much better run organization normally than the Houston Texans are. But it, it can be done, and I think it should be done. But it's not the most far Like, we just assume Lovey Smith is going to get fired because the team sucks. And they're 112 and one and they were supposed to be better than they were last year when they were 4-13, and and they're clearly worse. But there's a scenario where Cal McNair says, no, he's got four years left on his contract. I didn't hire this guy for one year. I gave him a five-year deal. I hired him for five years, so he wants to run it back. I mean, they run it back with a lot of the players from 4-13. and Maybe it wouldn't be the most shocking thing in the world, as much as I think we would all disagree with it, if they wanted to run it back with the head coach for one more year, at least. And then so, Nick Casario signs off on that? It, what choice does he have? You walk out on the job? Yeah. yeah, or to, uh, try or try and get fired at that point. Yeah, I mean, uh, that that could be what it comes down to. I, I mean, I, I'll operate. I, I don't totally buy that Nick wasn't in on Lovey. I think he was okay with it after he couldn't hire McCown. But if we're going to operate under this premise that some Texans fans believe that Casario didn't want Lovey, and now all of a sudden they come back to him and say, you can't fire Lovey Smith. I, if I'm Nick Casario, I'd be like, well, I'm not really able to be a GM because I'm being judged on a head coach I didn't want now for two years in a row. Sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd understand him for wanting to up and leave. That was the situation. I'm also not walking away from my my extremely expensive salary either. So yeah, I'm I trying to I'll get fired. I guess I'll just GM this team to hell. <laughs> yeah, try to get fired so you can get that buyout, right? If you resign, you don't get that. Maybe reach a settlement or something where you get some of that money. Easterby got a buyout. I'd ask for that. And Nick Casario could get another job in football. Yeah, and he'd be happier probably going somewhere where his input would be more allowed. If it's true that Cal's not going to let him fire Lovey. <sighs> What a disaster. Again, there's there's very few outcomes that are exciting that include Lovey Smith staying with this organization as the head coach. Very few. 